Welcome to the Skies Over Colorado for April 2021. I am Staff Astronomer John Ensworth of the Cherrywood Observatory, volunteer at the Little Thompson Observatory for Longmont Public Media. Astronomy news this month. We are back to looking at the Perseverance rover on Mars and a helicopter. Perseverance has a helicopter on board. You can see it here pictured mounted below the rover, at, well, the rover, rover's landing platform, and the arm grabbed it early this April and moved it off to the side. Remember that this launched July 2020, landed last month, 2021. This is an artist's rendition of what, what it will look like, and the first flight is expected somewhere around 11, the 11th of April. The helicopter itself is called Ingenuity. Here's a picture taken by the rover itself of the helicopter about 11 feet away, clear of everything, ready for its first test flight. And there's a close-up of the little thing. This is pretty amazing that they've come up with blades and motor speeds, power sufficient to operate in the very thin Martian atmosphere. We haven't had many comets just recently, and Comet Atlas is our best for April that we know of. It's not going to be great, but here's a picture from the end of March. It's not large, it's got a good greenish color. It's going to move very rapidly this month from the constellation of Aquila up to Canis Venicinti. It's pretty dim. It starts out magnitude 12, so only large telescopes could see it, but then it gets up to around the eighth magnitude when it passes closest to Earth a little bit later this month. So that would be good in a six inch telescope or so. And you can usually find someone who has a six inch scope. Give you a bigger picture. So this is about three o'clock in the morning. Here is Atlas beginning near Aquila and it heads up to Canis Vincent. We have good news to report that we will not be destroyed from an asteroid coming in from space, at least not this one, Apophis. We have known of Apophis for a while, and we had a conceptual spot in space just above the Earth called the Keyhole that in a future flyby, if this asteroid, which is about a thousand one hundred feet long to 20 million tons, happened to go through that Keyhole, then it would definitely hit the Earth in 2068, causing fantastic amounts of destruction, even far from where it hit. 99942 Apophis, uh, with very, very careful measurements, here's March 8th, 9th, and 10th, uh, has now been proven to probably be a little further than we thought originally, about 950 feet further from this 600 meter wide spot, this keyhole, than we thought. So, if that's true, it's not going to hit Earth at all. Extremely, vastly, ridiculously small, who cares, chance. Alright, let's take a look at big star parties. Yeah, the news hasn't changed much. Couldn't find anything in April, which would normally be a pretty active time. In May, the Texas Star Party had a date of May 2nd through 9 at Fort Davis. Oop, typo there. Yeah, that's been canceled. So if you want to keep an eye on these things, I've got the two rather large URLs here on the screen, and you can keep looking to see if something does get scheduled and stay on the books. Your Astronomy 101 lesson for this month is related to something we spoke of before. We talked about the shadow of the Earth at sunset and sunrise visible in the atmosphere in the belt of Venus. Now we're going to talk about types of twilight, both evening and morning. These are very mathematically defined. Uh, civil twilight occurs in the period of time that the sun is 
just below the horizon to six degrees below the horizon. It's civil twilight, civil dawn, civil uh, sunset. Down to 12 degrees below the horizon is nautical twilight, and 18 degrees down is astronomical twilight. And beyond that, you're in full night. So you usually want to see the end of astronomical twilight to really get out there and start looking for dim fuzzies in the sky. So civil twilight, the end of civil twilight, street lights are usually programmed to come on, car lights should be on. This is that time where contrast is kind of difficult. I don't know if more car accidents happen then, but people feel less safe, at least when they're driving. Nautical twilight looks like this. The brighter navigational stars are now visible. So sailors in the past using the sextant and other navigational aids would be able to look at the position of the bright stars. Note the time when they had good timepieces, and that's a really interesting story to look up historically uh, to figure out where they were. That's the earliest and the latest you could navigate by astronomical nighttime objects. Astronomical twilight, you're starting to see lots of stars come out. You might still have a little bit of light in the western sky, but the sky is now becoming fully dark. So a quick contrast, you can see the street lights are now fully on and nautical, and now you're having to take a time lapse to see details on buildings making building illumination very bright looking. The skies above your backyard this month, we have the last quarter moon on April 4th in the morning sky. New moon happens on the 11th, first quarter, so the moon's back in the evening sky. After about the 12th or the 13th or so, you see that little sliver in the southwest, and by the 20th, it's first quarter, with a full moon at the end of the month on 26th. The planets, well, we have one in the evening sky. In the dusk in the evening, it's just Mars, high up in the southwestern sky, and it uh, sets a couple hours or an hour before midnight. Also, in the evening this month, you do have dim Uranus out there, but you're not going to find it easily. It's so close to the sun, it's so dim, it's basically gone in the glow now. And Venus, if you happen to catch it, maybe with a telescope, knowing right where to look, will start to emerge from the sun's glow to make an appearance in the evening sky for much of the rest of this year. Taking a look at the big picture here, this is right after sunset. You can see the glow of the sun over this little graphical hill. There's Uranus down here in the glow, and Mars is pretty high up still at sunset. On either side of midnight, it's, well, not much. Mars is going down at about 11.30, 11.45 in the middle of the month. So, yeah, in the middle of the night, midnight, you are planet-free. In the morning sky, Neptune and Mercury are too close to the sun to be seen. But Jupiter and Saturn are now putting on a nice show. So here's the morning sky with a little bit of glow from the rising sun. It's Neptune too close really for anything to matter. Here's Jupiter and Saturn. Because of the angle of the ecliptic at this time of year, they are really low in the southeastern sky, even though they're getting kind of far from the sun. All right, the sun for April. April 1st, sunrise is at 6.43 a.m. And we gain 45 minutes of light on that side of the day at, by April 30th. Sunset is at 7.24, and we end up with a 7.53 p.m. sunlight sunset at the end of the month. And so our sunlight now increases by about the same, about half hour. So overall, we go from 12 hours, 40 minutes to 13 hours and 51 minutes, giving us uh, about an hour and 10 minutes more daylight. The noon time, local noon sun angle up from the southern horizon increases 10 degrees from 55 to 65 degrees. It still has a way to go for our June summer solstice. 
our feature object this month, is one of the only, well, the only planet that you can see with the naked eye and with small telescopes that we haven't covered yet, and that is Venus. And since Venus is coming into a good show for the rest of the year, might as well bring it up now. This is a false cover, false color, sorry, image. Lots of enhancements done on that. It's probably a spacecraft based image. In the upper right, this is what you most normally see down the lower right, with Venus being the brightest thing that uh, is a point like object in the nighttime sky. It is brighter than Jupiter, but Jupiter is given a higher billing because it is a superior planet. We talked about that in an earlier video. It goes all the way around the nighttime sky throughout the year, where Venus can get up to 46 or so degrees away from the sun at best. It is a weird planet though. It is almost exactly the same size as the Earth, 95% of our diameter with about 90% of our gravity at its surface. Its year is 224, 225 Earth days long, but its day is 243 Earth days long. So it actually rotates backwards. So its day is longer than its year. That gives it or results from what we call a 177 degree tilt in its axis. It is upside down. We define north by looking down from above a counterclockwise rotation. So north is wherever that happens as you're looking at the rotating whatever it is. Unlike Mercury last month, which has almost no atmosphere, this has a crushing atmosphere with pressures down at the surface similar to being a mile down in the ocean. All carbon dioxide, so it is suffocating. Temperatures in the many hundreds of degrees, 800 degrees or so, should have written that one down, uh, hot enough to melt lead. And the clouds above rain sulfuric acid uh, droplets down until they evaporate. So it is a pretty nasty place. Your Colorado observing challenge this month is to look to see if the moon really is bigger as it rises and sets than it is up in the high portion of the sky. This is an optical illusion where your brain is trying to use nearby uh, reference points like hillsides and trees and buildings to estimate the size of something just beyond them because your eyes can't see the parallax or the distance effect caused by the separation between your eyes for an object that is 200,000 miles away. So it says, wow, that's really big. And then high in the sky, it's this white circle surrounded by a whole bunch of nothingness and your brain says, wow, that's really small. So you can trick yourself by uh, turning your back and looking under your arm or between your legs if you're flexible enough to see if the moon seems to pop back to normal size. You can look at the moon and then get out a paper towel roll and look through it and that takes away all those references and the moon should look normal size again. Or you could take a digital camera image and take a picture of it at rise and in the middle of the night. So Astronomers Without Borders has challenges like this, and I grabbed this one from them this month. All right, astronomy events near Longmont. Not unlike uh, the star parties, most things are shut down, but there are still opportunities out there. The Longmont Astronomical Society on April 15th at 7 p.m. will have a Zoom meeting, How Do Galaxies Get Their Shapes? with Dr. Angela Collier. You can see longmontastro.org for details. They don't have any outdoor uh, open space star parties planned that I see on their site. If I'm following their pattern correctly, it should have happened or should happen around April 16th at 6.30 or 7.30 p.m. Kind of hard to tell. I don't have an archive of their site. So keep an eye on their site. Eventually, things are going to go back to normal. Little Thompson Observatory, <clears throat> they are uh, closed through June 2021, and then July is a maintenance month, so look for things in August. Uh, you can schedule 
of virtual meetings, um, which is done via Zoom, and you can look through the telescope basically from your home. Very limited, it takes a lot of work, and we only have a few volunteers that can be there at a time. But keep an eye on that site for those and Zoom meeting coming up. Estes Park Memorial Observatory is still mostly closed, but they are going to try to start doing limited single group only meetings. Groups under 12, no more than three times a week. And I'll go ahead and read the text here on the details. So currently the plan is to start hosting stall, small star gazing groups in mid-April. Groups will be limited to just one family group, a group of friends at a time. Uh, it's be good but not required that everyone is vaccinated. Uh, it could, groups could be made of families, close friends, classmates, but uh, don't mix with unvaccinated outsiders. Everyone needs to wear a mask during the event. Uh, only six will be allowed in the dome at a time to allow social distancing. And since there is only the director, Mike Conley, they do want to limit it to three times a week. So you have to go to angelsabove.org and send an email uh, to the info address or look to call the phone number also on that site. Northern Colorado Astronomical Society has a webinar speaker April 1st, uh, Dr. Fran uh, Ben Benegal. Ooh, I messed that up. Uh, Juno's extended mission in Jupiter via webcast. So look for the archive there since this is going to go up a little after the first. Fisk Planetarium, they have Dome to Home virtual programs, a live event April 15th at 7 p.m., a crowded orbit, the co evolution of satellites and space junk. So visit coloradoedu slash FISC. And in the observatory there, they ask you, well, there's one part that says you, to look for a meeting every Wednesday at 3 p.m. for live shows. But I do see specifically only April 2nd at 8 p.m. and April 30th at 8 p.m. Uh, scheduled at their YouTube channel. So explore there yourself, see what you can find. All right, wrapping up this month, take a look at our desktop software suggestion. And I've given you some pretty high dollar ones, so I'm going to go the other extreme now. This is called Stellarium. I also have this installed on my phone and iPad. Um, it's a free open source planetarium and it is constantly being developed and improved. It's pretty fantastic. Here's an example of the star map. Of controls, very pretty sky that it generates. You can pick locations anywhere in the world and also pick different scenes for your horizon and field that you're standing in. Probably even import your own. You can generate orbits and highlight planets, put things in motion in real time, bring up constellations and lore. You can even import different constellation um, sets from different cultures. And you can overlay more fanciful imagery for those constellations. Go to Stellarium.org, it is free. You can download Linux, Mac, OS, Windows, and even access it on the web. Pretty powerful software. If you have any additions or corrections from this month or suggestions for future shows, please email me, johnensworth at gmail.com. And you put skies over Colorado in the subject line so I know that this is what you're talking about. This has been Steve, staff astronomer, almost got to the end without a good mess up, staff astronomer John Ensworth for Longmont Public Media. See you next month. Keep looking up.